cover her up. How still it lies. You can see the outline under the light. You would think she was asleep. Let the sunshine come in. It loved it so. She that had traveled so far in so many lands and done so much, how she must like rest now. Did she ever love anything absolutely? This woman who so many men loved and so many women who gave so much sympathy and never asked for anything in return. Did she ever need a love she could not have? Was she never obliged to unclasp her fingers from anything to which they clung? Was she really so strong as she looked? Did she never wake up in the night crying for that which she could not have? Were thought and travel enough for her? Did she go about for long days with a weight that crushed her to earth? Cover her up. I do not think she would have liked us to look at her. In one way, she was alone all her life. She would have liked to be alone now. Life must have been very beautiful to her, or she would not look so young now. Cover her up. Let us go. Do you not want anything tonight? No, I am only waiting for a visitor. When they have been, I shall go. Have you got all your things taken away already? Yes, only these I am leaving. You must drink that. It's good for one. Nothing helps one like tea when one's been packing all day. I'll say goodbye to you when I go out. Come in. May I come in? I couldn't get rid of this downstairs. I didn't see where to leave it. How are you? This is a real bird's nest. I hope you did not mind my asking you to come. Oh, no, I'm delighted. I only found your note at my, at my club 20 minutes ago. So, you're really going to India? How delightful. But what are you going to do there? I think it was Gray told me six weeks ago you were going, but regarded it as one of those mythical stories which didn't deserve any credence. Yet, I'm sure I don't know why nothing would surprise me. What time is it since we last met? Six months? Eight? Seven. I really thought we were... I really thought you were trying to avoid me. What have you been doing with yourself all this time? Oh, been busy. Won't you have a cigarette? Won't you take one yourself? I know you object to smoking with men, but you can make an exception in my case. Thank you. But really, what have you been doing with yourself all this time? You're enti you've entirely disappeared from civilized life. When I was down at Graham's in the spring, they said that you were coming down, but then at the last second you cried off. We were all quite disappointed. What, what's taking you to India now? Going to preach the doctrine of social and intellectual equality to Hindu women and incite them into revolt? Marry some old Buddhist priest, build a little cottage on top of the Himalayas and live there? Discuss philosophy and meditate? I believe that's what you'd like. I really shouldn't wonder if I heard you done it. <laughs> I've been here a long time, four years, and I want change. I was glad to see how well you succeeded in that election. You were much interested in it, were you not? Oh yes, we had a stiff fight. It tells in my favor, you know. Thought it was not exactly a personal matter, but it was a great worry. Don't you think you were wrong in sending that letter to the papers? It would have strengthened your position to have remained silent. Yes, perhaps so. I think so now, but it didn't ma I did it under advice. However, we've won, so it's all right. Are you pretty fit? Oh, yes. Pretty well. Bored, you know. Doesn't, one doesn't know what to do with all the working and striving for sometimes. What are you going to do for your holiday this year? Oh, Scotland, I suppose. I always do. The old quarters. 
Why don't you go to Norway? It would be more change for you and rest you more. Did you get a book on sport in Norway? Did you send it me? How kind of you. I read it with much interest. I, almost, I was almost inclined to start off there and then. I suppose it's kind of visserte that creeps up on, uh, over you when one grows older and sends you back to the old place. A change would be for the better. There's a list at the end of the book of exactly the things one needs to take. I thought it would save trouble. You could just give it to your man and let him get it all. Have you still got him? Oh, yes. He's as faithful to me as a dog. I think nothing would induce him to leave me. He wouldn't allow me to go hunting since I sprained my foot last autumn. I have to do it very superstitiously. He thinks I can't keep my seat with a sprained ankle. But he's a very good fellow, takes care of me like a mother. But what are you going to India for? Do you know anyone there? No, I think it will be so splendid. I've always been a great deal interested in the East. It's a complex, interesting life. Going to seek more experience, you'll say, I suppose? I never knew a woman throw herself away as you do. A woman with your brilliant parts and attractions to let the whole of life slip through your fingers. And make nothing of it. You ought to be the most successful woman in London. Oh yes, I know what you're going to say. You don't care. That's just it. You don't. You're always going to get experience and going to get everything, and you never do. You're always going to write when you know enough, but you're never satisfied that you do. You ought to be making 2000 a year, but you don't care. That's just it. Living, burying, your, uh, burying yourself here with a lot of old frumps. You'll never do anything. You could have everything, and you just let it slip. Oh, my life is very full. There are only two things that are absolute realities, love and knowledge, and you can't escape them. I've let these rooms to a woman friend of mine. She doesn't know I'm going to leave these things here for her. She'll like them because they were mine. The world's very beautiful, I think. Delicious. Oh, yes. But what do you do with it? What do you make of it? You ought to settle down and marry like other women, not go wandering around the world to India and China and Italy and God knows where. You're simply making a mess of your life. You're always surrounding yourself with all sorts of extraordinary people. If I hear any woman or man is a great friend of yours, I always say, what's the matter? Lost his money? Lost his character? Got an incurable disease? I believe the only way in which anyone becomes interesting to you is if they have some complaint of the mind or body. I believe you worship rags. To come and shut yourself up in a place like this? Away from everybody and everything? It's a mistake. It's idiotic, you know? I'm very happy. You see, what matters is that something should need you. It isn't a question of love. What's the use of being near a thing if other people could serve it as well as you can? If they could serve it better, it's pure selfishness. It's the need of one thing for another that makes the organic bond of union. You love mountains and horses, but they don't need you. So what's the use of saying anything about it? I suppose the most absolutely delicious thing in life is to feel a thing needs you and to give at the moment it needs. Things that don't need you, you must love from a distance. Oh, but a woman like you ought to marry, ought to have children. You go and squander yourself on every old beggar or formless female or escaped convict you meet. It may be nice for them, but it's a mistake from your point of view. I intend to marry. It's a curious thing that when a man reaches a certain age, he wants to marry. He doesn't fall in love. It's not that he definitely plans anything, but he has a feeling that he ought to have a home and wife and children. I suppose it's the same kind of feeling that makes a bird build a nest at certain times of the year. It's not love, it's something else. When I was a young man, I used to despise men getting married. Wondered what they did it for. They had everything to lose and nothing to gain. But when a man gets to be six and thirty, his feelings change. It's not love, passion he wants. It's, it's a home, it's a wife and children. He may have a house and servants. It isn't the same thing. I should have thought a woman would have felt it too. Yes, at times a woman has a curious longing to have a child, especially when she is near to 30 or over it. It's something distinct from love for any definite person, but it's a thing one has to get over. For a woman, marriage is much more serious than for a man. She might pass her life without meeting a man whom she could possibly love. And if she met him, it might not be right or possible. Marriage has become very complex. Now it has become so largely intellectual. Won't she have another? 
You can light it from mine. You are a man who ought to marry. You've no absorbing mental work with which the woman would interfere. It would complete you. Yes, but life is too busy. I never find the time to look for one. I haven't a fancy for the pink and white prettiness so common that some men like so. I need something else. If I am to have a wife, I shall go to America and look for one. Yes, an American would suit you best. Yes, I don't want to look for a, I don't want a woman to look after. She must be self-sustaining. She mustn't bore you. You know what I mean? Life is too full of cares to have a helpless child to add to them. Yes, the kind of woman who you want would be young and strong. She need not be excessively beautiful, but she must be attractive. She must have energy, but not too strongly marked in individuality. She must be largely neutral. She need not give you too passionate or too deep a devotion, but she must second you in thoroughly rational manner. She must have the same aims and tastes that you have. No woman has the right to marry a man if she has to bend herself out of shape for him. She might wish to, but she can never be to him with all her passionate endeavor what the other woman could be to him without trying. Character will dominate over all and will come out at last. When you marry, you mustn't marry a woman who flatters you too much. It is always a sign of falseness somewhere. If a woman absolutely loves you as herself, she will criticize and understand you as herself. Two people who are to live through life together must be able to look each other in the eye and speak the truth. That helps one through life. You would find many such women in America, women who would need you to help you succeed, who would not drag you down. Yes, that's my idea. But how am I to obtain the ideal woman? Go and look for her. Go to America instead of Scotland this year. It is perfectly right. A man has a right to look for what he needs. With a woman, it is different. That's the one of the radical differences between men and women. It's a law of her nature and of sex relationship. There's nothing arbitrary or conventional about it any more than there is in her having to bear her child while the male does not. Intellectually, we may both be alike. I suppose if 50 men and 50 women had to solve a mathematical problem, they would all do it in the same way. The more abstract and intellectual, the more alike we are. The nearer you approach to the personal and sexual, the more different we are. If I were to represent men's and women's natures by a diagram, I would take two circular discs. The right side of each I would paint bright red. Then I would shade the other I would shade the red away till in a spot on the left edge it became blue, and in the other in one, green in the other. That spot represents sex. The nearer you come to it, the more the two discs differ in color. Well then if you turn them so that the red sides touch, they seem to be exactly alike. But if you turn them so that the green and blue paint form their point of contact, they will seem to be entirely unlike. That's why you notice the brutal, sensual men invariably believe women are entirely different from men, another species of creature, and very cultured. Intellectual men sometimes believe we are exactly alike. You see, sex love in its substance may be the same in both of us, in the form of its expression, it must differ. It's not a man's fault, it's nature's. If a man loves a woman, he has the right to try to make her love him because he can do it openly, directly, without bending. There need be no subtlety, no indirectness. With a woman, it's not so. She can take no love that is not laid openly, simply at her feet. Nature ordains that she can never show what she feels. The woman who had told a man she loved him 